In this session, we are going to see ADC programming in STM32446 microcontroller. So first of all, let us see how a sensor is connected to a controller through an ADC. So let us take this is a signal what you want to convert into digital data. Right. So that sensor, the sensor will be sensing this physical signal. Say for example, let us consider this sensor is a temperature sensor. So the physical signal will be nothing but the temperature data or temperature. So the sensor temperature sensor will sense this physical quantity. Then generally the sensor will be giving an analog signal output. So analog signal corresponding to the sensor will be sent to a signal conditioning unit which will condition the signal, it will remove the noise and the proper analog voltage will be given to the ADC. ADC stands for analog to digital converter. So the analog signal will be converted to its corresponding digital format and will be connected to the CPU. Why you are sending digital signal to a CPU? Because CPU is nothing but a complex digital device which can accept only Generally, it can accept only digital signal. So, the analog signal what you are getting from the sensor, you are converting it to a digital data using ADC and you are sending it to the, uh, to the CPU. So, this is a block diagram representing an 8 bit ADC. Right? So, you are giving an input analog signal here in the V in pin and V reference is connected ground is connected so ground is nothing but the v reference minus and this is the v reference plus then when you are giving a start of conversion signal whatever analog voltage you are giving here it will be sampled and held in the adc for some time using a circuit known as sample and hold circuit after the sampling and holding is over the sampling and holding means the input signal will be charged in a particular capacitor known as holding capacitor once the charging is over, that capacitor will be disconnected from the input signal. So that input variations will not affect the conversion. So charging capacitor, once it is charged, it will be disconnected from the input. And that charge stored in the capacitor will be converted to the corresponding binary data. So since we have taken 8-bit ADC, the binary data will be having only 8-bit. And the time taken for storing the charge in the capacitor is known as sampling time that is known as a sampling time so if you are increasing the charge sampling time the input voltage or the converted voltage will be almost same as the actual voltage so whatever input voltage you are giving the charge stored in the capacitor if you are giving sufficient sampling time the charge stored in it will be almost equivalent to the input voltage that means when you are converting this voltage you will get almost accurate digital output of the correct data but you, you cannot keep on increasing the sampling time if the sampling time is more it will affect the conversion speed of the adc so sampling time should be selected in such a way that the uh, actual voltage output binary data output will be almost same as the uh, voltage input but it should not affect the conversion speed of the ADC too much. Then this is a table showing the resolution versus step size. Let us take these are the ADCs uh, with say 8 bit resolution, 10 bit resolution, 12 bit resolution etc. So if you are having an ADC with the 8 bit resolution, the step size will be nothing but 2 raised to 8. That is 256 steps it can have. ADC can have voltages from represented in 0, 8 zeros till 8 ones. So the step size will be 2 raised to 8 that is 256 and each what will be the, that will be the number of steps. So what will be the step size how much step size or how much voltage each step can measure that is a reference voltage that is 5 volt is a reference voltage 5 volt divided by the number of steps. So 5 volt divided by number of step will give the step size or this is known as the minimum voltage your ADC can measure if you are using 8 bit ADC. Similarly, if you are using 10 bit ADC, the number of steps will be 2 raised to 10. 
that is 1024. So the step size will be, how will you measure it? 5 volt divided by 1024. That means it can measure 4.88 millivolt in each step. That means minimum your ADC can measure 4.8 millivolt. So this is a table showing the resolution and the step size. And this is a table showing the V reference and the V in range. So let us take your ADC is having 5 volt V reference. So how much voltage it can measure? It can measure voltages from 0 to 5. Let us take if you are having 3 volt as a V reference, then you can measure voltages from 0 to 3. Right? So corresponding to that, what will be the step size? If you are taking 8 bit ADC, the step size will be this 3 volt V reference by 2 raised to 8, that is 256. 3 by 256. So step size will be 11.71. But if you are taking a 10 bit ADC for the same 3 volt V reference, what will be the V range? 0 to 3. But the step size, you can see that it has been reduced from 11.31 to 2.93. That means whenever you are in having an ADC with more bit resolution, this is known as the actual resolution of the ADC. So if you are having 10 bit resolution ADC, the step size will be less. That means the voltage what you are going to measure will be more accurate. Each step will have only 2.9 millivolt. You can ref, you can measure smallest voltage of 2.3 2.93 millivolt. These are the ADC registers present in STM32 F446 controller. So ADCSR that is status register, CR1 that is control register 1, control register 2, SMPR1 means it is sampling time register then data register etc. These are few of the important registers we need to configure. Other registers are also there. We will see it later. So in STM32F446 total 19 channels are there. What do you mean by channel? Each channel can be used for connecting a separate sensor but only one channel will be connected to the successive approximation ADC here we are having successive approximation ADC. At a, so at a time only one channel will be converted into its corresponding digital data. So total 19 channels are there. That means 19 inputs you can give. But at a time only one channel will be converted to its corresponding digital data. That channel selection is done using this channel selection bits. And out of this 19 channel, Channel number 16, 17 and 18 cannot be connected to external sensor. It is used for internal purpose. Right? 16 is not connected. 17 is used for giving reference input. And 18 it is used for connecting VBAT or VSense. So other than these three channels, all the 16 channels you can connect to external input sensors. This is a pin assignment in STM32446, right? So PA0 is having the functionality of A in 0. What do you mean by A in 0? Analog input channel 0. PA1 is having a functionality of analog input channel 1. Like that up to A in 15. So channel number 0 to 15 is mapped on to these corresponding pins of ports. Here, for time being, we are going to configure channel 1 for our case. So, we are going to use analog input channel 1. That means you need to configure PA1 with analog functionality. PA1 need to be configured as analog input channel 1. So, for that first step should be we need to enable clock to GPIOA. Here we told that PA1 we are going to use for our program. So, GPIOA should be enabled. The clock should be connected to GPIOA. So, we need to use a register known as AHB1 ENR register. This register is used for enabling clock to GPIOA. So, the 0th bit of AHB1 ENR is used for enabling GPIOA. So, I am writing 1 to 0th bit of AHB ENR. So, AHB1 ENR or equal to 1. That means 0th bit of this register I am enabling. 
Then as a next step, we are going to configure the mode selection register. What is the function of mode selection register? This mode selection register is used for configuring the functionality of a particular pin. All the pins are having multiple functionality. So whichever functionality you need to configure for a pin or a GPIO, you need to configure mode selection register. So in this mode selection register, set of two bits are used for configuring each of the function functionalities of each pin. So bit number 0 and 1, it is used for configuring functionality of 0th pin. So if I am taking GPIO A, PA0 pin functionality is configured by 0 and first pin, first bit. Then GPIO A first pin that is PA1 functionality is configured by using bit number 3 and 2. PA2 functionality is configured by using bit number 4 and 5 like that. So here in my case I need to configure PA1 functionality as analog mode. So which bit I need to configure bit number 2 and 3 because these bits are used for configuring PA1 that is represented by mode 1. Mode 1 stands for it is a mode selection bit for PA1 and what value you need to write here if you are writing 0 0 you will be configuring PA1 as input if you are writing 0 1 you will be configuring PA1 as output if you are configuring 1 0 you will be configuring PA1 with alternative function mode and 1 1 if you are writing you will be configuring it in analog mode so in my case I need to configure PA1 as analog input channel 1. So I need to configure it as analog mode. So I need to write 1 1 to bit number 3 and 2. So what I am doing? I am writing mode R GPIO A mode R because I am going to configure PA1. So GPIO A mode R and equal to tilde of 0 C. 0 C means 1 1 0 0. So if I am giving and equal to tilde of 1100 means these two bits will be cleared in mode register. Which are those bits? Bit number 3 and 2 will be cleared initially. Then I am writing or equal to 0x0c. That means I am writing 00001100 or equal to. That means bit number 3 and 2 will be set. So when I am writing or equal to 0x0c, bit number 3 and 2 will be set. That means you are writing 1 1. So what does it mean? We are configuring analog mode for PA1 that is AN1. We are configuring PA1 as analog input channel 1 by configuring it in analog mode writing 1 1. So this is a block diagram showing the STM32 F446 clock tree. Right? Why you are going to see this? Because we are going to configure ADC1. In my case, I am going to configure ADC1. Right? Similarly, ADC2 is there, ADC3 is there. So, for my experience, I am configuring ADC1 channel 1. So, first of all, I need to identify to which bus interface ADC1 is connected. Then only I can enable the clock to this ADC as well as I can configure the clock to ADC. So, from this diagram, we can see that ADC1 is connected to APB2 bus. ADC1 is connected to high speed APB2 bus. So, I need to enable the clock to ADC1 by using a register known as APB2 ENR register. I need to connect APB2 clock to ADC1 by using APB2 ENR. And for the calculation of the ADC, we need to take APB2 into account. So I have told APB2 ENR register is used for enabling clock to ADC1. So APB2 ENR bit number 8, if you are setting it as 1, we are enabling clock to ADC1. So how will you set it? I am writing or equal to 0x000100. That means the 8th bit you are setting as 1. By doing that, we are enabling clock to ADC1. Then in this step, we are configuring the sampling time. So SMPR1 register stands for ADC sampling time register. So I have already told that whenever you are giving a signal, 
it will be sampling and hold for some time so that holding means you are charging a capacitor through the input voltage for some amount of time that time is known as the sampling time when the sampling time is over the charged capacitor is disconnected from the input why you are disconnecting it from the input or what is the use of sampling and holding so that the output conversion will not affect the input because at some time uh, at some point of time while you are converting the input sometimes the analog voltage may change this will affect the conversion so in order to remove this problem that means the uh, input voltage should not affect the conversion so what you are doing is first you will charge a capacitor with the input voltage then you will disconnect the input and the charged capacitor value are converting it into digital data so how much time you are going to charge the capacitor is known as a sampling time if you are increasing the sampling time uh, um, with a larger value it will affect the speed of conversion of the adc so sampling time should be selected appropriately and by default the sampling time is three cycles and there are two registers known as smpr1 and smpr2 for configuring the sampling time of each channel so smpr1 register is used for configuring the time of channel 10 to channel 18 so set of three bits are used for configuring the sampling time of each channel so smpr1 is used for configuring sample time from channel number 10 to 18 Similarly, there is another register known as SMPR2. This is used for configuring the sampling time of channel number 0 to 9. 0 to 9. So, in my case, I am configuring channel 1. So, I need to configure SMPR2. Which bits I need to configure? 3 to 5. So, these 3 bits are used for configuring sampling time of channel 1. That is represented by SMP1. SMP0 means sampling time for channel 0 smb1 means sampling time for channel 1 and what value in it right here we are selecting the default value itself 0 0 0 right so smpr2 equal to 0 that means these all bits are correspondingly by default it is 0 so three cycles are configured for all channels so for cha channel 1 also three cycle is selected as a sampling time then next one is known as CCR register. It is a common control register. So this register is used for configuring the functionality of all the channels. So by configuring this, all the channels certain functionality can be configured. That is why it is known as common control register. So here we are considering only bit number 16 and 17 in this slide. So 16 and 17 is used for configuring the ADC prescalar. That means at what rate ADC should work or it decides the speed of the ADC. So whatever APB2 clock you are giving to the ADC, there is a particular prescaler for ADC. By configuring that, you are configuring the ADC speed. So by default, these two bits will be 0, 0. So 0, 0 means P clock by 2, P clock 2 divided by 2. P clock 2 means it is a clock generated from APB2. P clock stands for peripheral clock. So P clock 2 is clock peripheral clock generated by from APB2. P clock 1 means it is a peripheral clock generated from APB1. So here since ADC1 is connected to APB2, P clock 2 is used. So if you are writing 00, 0 here in ADC PRE value, we are selecting P clock by as the ADC clock. If you are writing it 0, 1, P clock by 4 will be selected as ADC clock like that. So you can configure it as P clock by 2, 4, 6 or 8. And when you are configuring a particular uh, prescalar here, all the channels will be affected. This clock is common for all ADC and all the channels. So once you are selecting this, all the ADC will be configured uh, uh, make the conversion in this speed p clock 2 by 2 so by default the clock is p clock 2 divided by 2 so how will you do that adc1 ccr equal to 0 then the next bit 0 to 4 this bit is known as 
multi ADC mode selection bits. So if you are using multiple ADC in your program, how the ADC should be working? So you can make the ADC work in independent mode or in dual mode. That means ADC 1 and ADC 2 will be working together. ADC 3 will be independent. Like that many combinations are there. If you want to see all the combinations, you can go through the data sheet of this particular controller. By default, all these values will be set to zeros, five zeros. That means if you are using more than one ADC in my program, say if I am using ADC 1 channel 1 and ADC 2 channel 3, if I am using more than one ADC, both the ADC will be independent among themselves. So by default, it is like that. If you want to configure this, so many combinations are there, you can go through a data sheet for that. So that is known as multi-bit bit number 0 to 4 in CCR register. Next, next register, important register is known as ADC CR1. That is ADC control register 1. So here, some of the bits you are going to configure. The first set you are going to configure bit number 24 and 25. That is a resolution. So by configuring 24 and 25, we are configuring the resolution of ADC. Right? So ADC can have resolution configured from 6 bit to 12 bit. So 12 bit means the output of the digital output of ADC will be having 12 bit binary data. If you are configuring it to 6 bit, it will be having only 6 bit data. So if the number of bits are lesser, the step size will be bigger. That means resolution will be less. So based on the application, we need to configure the resolution. For time being, I am configuring it in 12-bit resolution mode. So, for converting 12-bit, it will take 15 ADC clock cycles. Why it is 15? Each bit will take one ADC clock. So, so for converting 12 bits, it will take 12 clocks. For conversion of each bit, it will take one ADC clock. So, for conversion of 12-bit, since we have configured 12-bit resolution, for converting 12 bits, 12 clocks are will be taking and 3 additional clocks will be taken for the sampling time which we have configured in few slides before. So 3 cycles will be the sampling time and 12 cycles will be used for converting 12 bits. That is why total 15 ADC clocks will be there. So similarly if you are configuring 10 bit resolution, 13 ADC clock will be there. Why? 10 bits are used for converting 10 bits or 10 cycles are used for converting 10 bits plus 3 cycles will be used for sampling time. So total 10 cycle plus 3 cycle for sampling time that is 13 cycles. So here I am writing 0 0 in order to configure 12 bit resolution. So will I write ADC 1 CR 1 or equal to 1. So this is the representation of 1 in this bit number 25 and 24 it is 0, 0. When I am writing ADCR1, 1, 1, what does it mean? Bit number 25 and 24 is 0, 0. Remaining bits we are going to see in the next slide. So, the next bit what we are concentrating is on the bit number 5. It is known as end of conversion interrupt enabled. Right? So, for ADC what, what I have told, we will be giving a start of conversion signal. So, conversion will start. Once the conversion is over, ADC will generate a signal known as end of conversion. So once the end of conversion is reached, we can read the result from the ADC. Right? That is how you are normally doing. But the same end of conversion, when the end of conversion is happening, it can generate an interrupt known as end of conversion interrupt. So if you want to enable that interrupt, this bit should be 1. Right? So now for time being, we are not using the interrupt here. So, I am writing it as 0. That means EOC interrupt will be disabled. If you want to generate an interrupt, you can write it 1, 5th bit 1. Now, I am disabling it, so 5th bit is 0. So, you can see 5th bit is 0. Then, the next bits in the same control register is 0 to 4. These 5 bits are used for configuring the ADC input channel. Right. So, if I am writing these four, five bits as 0, 0, 0, 0, that means you are going to configure ADC 
analog input channel 0 as the input input channel that means analog input channel 0 will be connected to the successive approximation adc through the channel selection line so these are known as the channel selection bits so if i am writing 0, 0, 0, 001 adc input channel 1 will be connected to adc in my case i am connecting my sensor to adc1 channel 1 so what should i do i need to configure the channel as 0, 0, 0, 001 that means analog input channel 1 will be converted by the adc so by writing adc r1 or equal to 1 what does it mean the last 5 bits will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 001 that means you are configuring channel 1 as my input channel so these are the channel bits port pin and and analog input channel so if i want to configure analog input channel 0 what should be the channel selection bits 0, 0, 0, 0, 5 zeros. If the analog input channel should be say analog A in, A in 6, that is analog input channel 6, which pin it is connected to PA6 and what value you should write into channel selection bits 0, 6. So these are the values corresponding to the analog input channel what you want to configure in the AD. AWDCH bit that is known as a channel selection bits. Then the next register is known as ADCCR2 that is control register 2. So here also few bits we are configuring. The first set of bit is bit number 28 and 29. It is known as external trigger enable for regular channels. External trigger enable. What does it mean? ADC conversion can be started with the help of an external trigger event what are examples of the external trigger event say timer 1 capture compare 1 event when you are giving an input in cc1 pin of timer 1 the pwn generation using cc1 and uh, the timer uh, configuration using cc1 we will see in the pwm part right so the cc1 pin is nothing but capture compare channel 1 pin of timer 1 so if you are giving an event or a signal in C external signal in cc1 pin we can start the adc or you are giving an external input signal in cc2 pin we can start the adc like that there are several external events possible for starting the conversion but in my case I am not going to start the ADC based on this event. I am going to start the ADC under the software trigger. What does it mean? There is a particular bit known as conversion start bit. There is a bit known as conversion start bit. In the next slide we will see that. Start of conversion signal. So when you are making that bit in a register as 1, you need to start the ADC. That is known as software trigger. So, we don't need to start the ADC based on external event. We need to start the ADC when I am setting a particular bit known as start of conversion bit in a register. So, when you are making that bit as 1 through the software, I need to start the ADC. Right? So, for that, I need to write 0, 0 to external trigger enable bit. 0, 0 stands for what? It is trigger detection disabled. That means ADC conversion will be starting based on the software trigger. If you are writing 1, what will happen? ADC conversion will start on the trigger detection and on the rising edge. So, if you have configured the trigger event as CC1 in another register, CC1's rising edge ADC will start. If you are writing 1, 0, what will happen? CC1's falling edge ADC will start. But in my case, I don't need this trigger event. When I am setting the start of conversion signal in a register as 1, I need to start the ADC. So the trigger detection I am disabling. That means ADC will be started based on a software trigger. So what value should I write? 0, 0 in bit number 29 and 28 of control 2 register. So ADC 1, CR2 I am writing 0. So here 0 means bit number 28 and 29 is 0, 0. Then in the same CR2 register, 
we are configuring the 11th bit. It is known as alignment bit, data alignment bit. So we have configured the ADC resolution as 12 bit in the previous step. So how will be the 12 bit data aligned in the ADC result register or ADC data register. So if you are giving say for an 8 bit resolution, if you are using right alignment in the ADC data register, the data will be aligned like this. LSB of result will be here. MSPF result will be here. Right. But if you are using left aligned data, MSB will be here, LSB will be here. Similarly, if you are using 12 bit ADC, in my case I have configured resolution as 12 bit. So the data LSB will be at the LSB point and the 12th bit will be at the, uh, the uh, 12th position. Similarly, if I am going uh, if I am using left alignment, 12th bit will be here. 0th bit will be somewhere here. So for time being I am using right justified or right aligned so that I can directly read the result. Here if I am using left aligned I need to read the result then I need to shift by these many units towards right. Then only I can get the meaningful data. But if I am using right justified directly I can read the data and process it because it is already present in the uh, little Indian representation that is LSB bit is placed in the LSB bit position. So directly I can read the result. So here I am configuring right alignment for my ADC data register. So 11th bit I am writing 0. So by writing CR to 0 the 11th bit is already set to 0. Then in the same CR2 register bit number 1 this is used for configuring Continuous conversion or single conversion. So what do you mean by single conversion? Single conversion means when you are starting the conversion by setting a start of conversion bit, it will start the conversion and when the conversion is over, end of conversion will, bit will be set. So when end of conversion is set, I can read the data. Again, if you want to perform the conversion, we need to make the start of conversion bit set. The programmer need to make it set again then only the second conversion will start but in continuous conversion mode automatically the conversion will keep on going but in my program I need to have only single conversion that means whenever I am setting the start bit then only conversion should take place and when the end of conversion is over I will read the result again I will start the I will make the start bit as one so the second conversion will take place so I am using single conversion mode so how will I configure single conversion mode write 0 to this continuous bit that is first bit of CR2 I am configuring single conversion mode by writing 0 so again the same same command if you are writing CR2 equal to 0 all these bits whichever bit we have seen for the three slides will be configured so when I am writing 0, the first bit is 0, that means single conversion mode is selected. Then the next register is known as sequence register. So there are three sequence registers, sequence register 3, 2 and 1. Sequence register is used for configuring the regular sampling sequence or regular conversion sequence for all the channels. Right? So you can see set of 5 bits are used for conversion used for configuring the sequence for each channel right so total 18 channels are there so total 16 channels are there so for configuring all the 16 channels set of 5 bits are used in sequence register so total 3 sequence registers are there sequence register 1 2 and 3 in sequence sequence register 3 it is used for configuring the regular conversion sequence for our channel. So how will I do that? Whichever sequence register you need to configure with a particular channel number, you can write it here. Right? So these bits are written by the software with the channel number assigned as the first in the conversion sequence. So if I am writing a channel number in sequence 1 bits, what does it mean? Sequence 1 stands for it is a first conversion in regular sequence. 
that means first channel 1 will be converted in the sequence then in sequence 2 if you are writing channel 3 after converting first channel third channel will be converted then in sequence 3 if we have written say channel 10 as a third sequence channel 10 will be uh, will be converted so if i am writing sequence 1 with the first channel sequence 2 with the second channel sequence 3 with the tenth channel what will happen adc will convert first channel then the second channel then the third channel like that so the sequence register is used for configuring the regular conversion sequence for each channel so whichever uh, order we need to convert in that order you need to give the channel these are the order sequence 1 sequence 2 sequence 3 like that right so if you want to convert to say 5 channels one after the other the first channel number you need to configure here second channel number you need to configure here third channel you need to configure here fourth here and fifth here that means you have configured a particular sequence for ADC conversion. First ADC channel will be converted in the first conversion. Then second channel, third channel, fourth channel, fifth channel, etc. This option was not available in the previous controllers. The sequence conversion option. Right. So here for time being I am using only one channel. So I am configuring sequence 1 with the channel 1. So whichever sequence I need to have that sequence should be written with the corresponding channel number so here i am using only one sequence i am not using multiple channel only one channel is there so i am using only one sequence so in sequence one i need to write the channel number one what is that zero 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 one right channel number you have seen while configuring the channel bits so the same channel selection bits you need to write here so if you want to configure channel zero as first sequence what you should write 0 0 0 0 0 but here i need to configure channel 1 as the first sequence so i need to write 0 0 0 0 1 so first adc will convert to this channel right so what does it mean conversion sequence starts at the channel 1 so the first sequence will be nothing but your adc 1 channel 1 will be converted like that how many sequence you need to have how will you configure here i told i am having only one sequence so only one channel i need to configure in sequence one if i want to have uh, three channels con uh, converted in a sequence i need to configure channel one here channel two here channel three here but i need to configure the sequence length as three right so how will i configure the sequence length that is done in sequence one register in sequence 1 register, 4 bits are dedicated for configuring the sequence length. So, if I want to configure 3 channels, what I told? In first sequence, I need to give channel 1, here channel 2, here channel 3. So, the sequence number should be 3. Length of my sequence is 3. Then only these 3 channels will be converted. Otherwise, only channel 1 will be taken as a sequence. Right. So, how will you configure this? length of this sequence in sequence 1 register regular sequence register 1 so here bit number 20 to 23 these four bits are used for configuring regular channel sequence length in my case i am i am i am having only one channel so my sequence length is only one so what value should i write here 0 0 0 0 so here you should keep in mind 0 0 0 means sequence length is 1 0, 0, 0, 1 means it is sequence number 2 like that. So, 0, 0, 0 means 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 means it is 2. So, here I am having only 1 sequence length because I need to convert only ADC sequence 1. So, I am configuring the sequence length as 1. How will I do that? Right? 0, 0, 0, 0. So, sequence 1 register should be written as 0 for conversion sequence length as 1. And in the previous step, we have written sequence 3 as 1. What does it mean? We are configuring sequence 1 bits with the channel 1. That means we will perform the conversion of channel 1 in the first sequence. So I am writing SQR3 equal to 1, that is 0, 0, 0, 1. Here SQR1 equal to 0, that means the length of sequence is 1. 
then all the con now all the configuration of, of ADC is over. So as the last step, what you need to do, you need to enable the ADC converter. So how will you do that? You need to configure CR2 ADC register, CR2 register. That is ADC control register 2. In that 0th bit is known as AD on bit. So once all the configuration of the peripheral is done, ADC peripheral is done, then only I should switch on the ADC. So as the last step, you are making 0th bit of CR2 as 1. So when you are making this bit as 1, you are enabling ADC conversion. ADC, not conversion, you are enabling the ADC. So ADC1, CR2 equal to 1. So when I am writing this, the 0th bit is 1, ADC is enabled. Then once the ADC is enabled, you need to start the conversion. In the previous step, in this step, we have only enabled the ADC, right? Next, we need to start the conversion. How will you start the conversion? In the same CR2 register, bit number 30, it is known as software start bit, right? Or start of conversion for regular channel, start of conversion for regular channel. So, if you are making this bit as 1, ADC conversion will start immediately right so when you are making this as one adc conversion will start this is known as a software trigger for the adc configuration in the previous one of the step we have configured the adc with the software trigger that means we are telling the adc that adc conversion should start only under software trigger not under external trigger so what is meant by that software trigger the programmer should set to the 30 bit uh, 30th bit of cr2 that is software start or start of conversion bit of adc in cr2 as one so when the programmer is making this bit as one adc conversion will start right so once the adc is enabled the next step should be start of conversion how will i do that make 30th bit as one i will write it adc1 cr2 or equal to 0x 4000. 4000 means 0100. That is 30th bit making it as 1. Right? And the ADC conversion should be will only start when AD on bit is 1. If AD on bit is not 1, ADC conversion will not be started. So before starting of the conversion, you need to enable the ADC. Once the ADC is enabled, you can start the ADC conversion by making this bit as 1. Then what, what do you need to do? So now the conversion has started. Then how will I identify the conversion is over? You need to check for EOC signal. That is regular channel end of conversion signal. So this is known as a end of conversion flag. Where is this flag available? In ADC status register. Like the carry flag, zero flag, etc what you have seen in the CPSR that is the current program status register similar to that each of the peripherals are having associated flags which shows certain operation has been completed so EOC flag is related with ADC it shows the end of conversion so when the conversion of ADC is over EOC bit will be sent which is that EOC bit first bit of status register of ADC Right. So, if EOC set, if EOC bit is cleared, that means conversion is still going on. So, if this bit is zero, we need to wait until it is set. We need to wait until conversion is over. So, how will I write that? While exclamation ADC one SR and two. Why I am writing status register and two? I need to extract the EOC bit alone. This is first bit alone. All the other bits I need to mask with the zero. So in order to mask all the other bits zero and extract this bit alone, I am adding the status register with the two. Two means it is zero 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 one zero. So whichever bit it is corresponding to this one, that will be extracted. All the other bits will be masked to zero. That is why I am writing ADC one SR and two. Right? And I am using an exclamation. What is the purpose of this? It is 
something similar to a not it is not operation so if the adc and two values equal to equal to zero not stands for equal to equal to zero if this is zero not of zero what will be not of zero it is one that means while one that means this statement will be executed again this condition is true that means if the end of conversion bit is zero this condition will be true so the while loop will be keep on executing it don't have any statements so it will keep on checking the statement so until eoc signal is zero it will be in the while loop itself when eoc bit is one that what does it mean this value will be sr and 2 will be one so not of one is zero so the condition will be false and it will go to the next statement so when eoc signal is one then only I should read the data from data register. So you need to wait until EOC is, zero, EOC is 1 here. So when EOC is 0, you will be waiting here. When it is 1, it will come down. Right? So you should read the data from data register only when the end of conversion signal is 1. Right? So you are reading the data to result. Result is nothing but my variable which I am using in the program. So I should read the data from the ADC register only when end of conversion signal is 1. This is the ADC data register. It can hold total 16 bits. So based on the resolution of my ADC, we will be having only 6 bit data or 8 bit data or 10 bit data or 12 bit data. Here for time being I have configured it as 12 bit. So my data will be 12 bit size. Then this is a circuit diagram which I am using for writing my program. I am going to connect a potentiometer. Potentiometer is nothing but it is used as a simulation for a of a sensor. So when I am turning the potentiometer, the output voltage value will change. And that voltage I am connected to analog input channel 1 in my program. So I am connecting a potentiometer to analog input channel 1 and when the ADC conversion will start and when the ADC converted value is greater than a particular value, one LED will be on. If the value is below a particular value, that LED will be off. That is a program what you are going to write. So this is a program for ADC conversion. here. I have connected a potentiometer to channel 1 of ADC, right? So when I am turning the potentiometer, ADC value connected to channel 1 will change and based on the ADC digital output, I will be controlling an LED. If the ADC value is above certain value, one of the LED connected to PA5 will be switched on. If the value of the ADC is below that, PA5 will be switched off. That is a configuration. So first of all, I am going to set up the pin PA5 for the LED. So how will I do that? I need to first of all enable GPIOA. How will I enable GPIOA? AHB1 ENR I am making it as 1 in order to enable clock for GPIO. Then in these two steps, I am going to configure the PA5 in output mode. How will I configure PA5 in output mode? The corresponding two bits in the mode selection register should be written with 0, 1. If I am writing the two bits in mode selection register with the 0, 0, it will be configured as input. If I am writing 0, 1, it will be configured as output. So by writing by these two statements, we are configuring PA5 as output mode. Then in the next group of statement, we are setting up PA1 for analog input. Why? I have already told that my uh, potentiometer is connected to analog input channel 1. So analog input channel 1 is nothing but PA1. So I need to configure PA1 as analog input. So how will I configure PA1? The same, this is this we have already done AHB1 ENR equal to 1. That means GPIOA will be enabled with the clock. Then PA1 I need to configure in analog mode. So, which register I should take? GPIOA mode selection register. So, in mode selection register, as I have uh, told before, the two bits corresponding to PA1, if you are writing 00, it will be configured as input. If you are writing 01, 
it will be output 1 0 it will be alternate function if you are writing 1 1 it will be configured as analog mode so in order to configure pa1 as analog input channel i need to write 1 1 to corresponding two bits of mode selection register that is what we have done here we are configuring pa1 as analog mode then in this step we are configuring the adc1 so first what i am doing is i am going to enable adc1 clock how will i do that apb2 enr i am writing or equal to 0x 00010 that means i am configuring adc1 clock clock to the adc1 by using apb2 why using apb2 enr because adc1 is connected to apb2 bus interface adc1 is connected to apb2 bus interface so apb2 enr equal to 00010 so you are enabling clock to adc1 then smr2 you are writing it as 0 what does it mean you are configuring configuring the sampling time for adc channel 1 as 3 cycles smr2 smpr2 and smpr1 digits are there but for configuring channel 1 we need to configure smpr2 to 0 so by default three cycles will be configured as sampling time then ccr we are configuring it as zero what does it mean we are configuring the adc prescaler as pclk2 by 2 why it is pclk2 it is peripheral clock generated from apb2 or generated uh, from the apb2 so adc prescaler i am configuring it as pclk2 by 2 by configuring ccr as 0 so by default the prescaler will be pclk by 2 then i am writing cr1 or equal to 1 that means i am configuring the analog input channel 1 for my adc cr1 1 means analog input channel 1 then cr2 0 means i am configuring software trigger we have already seen software trigger is there external trigger is there for starting of the adc I need to configure software trigger that means when I am making a start of conversion bit as 1 then only the ADC conversion should start. So CR2 I am making it as 0. Then SQR3 I am making it as 1. What does it mean? I am configuring the conversion start sequence or sequence 1 as channel 1. So channel 1 will be converted first. So sequence 1 I am configuring with the channel 1 by configuring sqr3 as 1 then in the next step I, I need to configure the sequence length how many channels i need to convert it in a sequence in my case i am having only one channel so my sequence length also will be one so first sequence will be channel one again the channel one will be converted like that it will be going on so since i am having only one channel my sequence length will be configured with one then after configuring all these configurations of ADC as well as GPIO, we need to enable the ADC. How will you enable the ADC one? Zeroth bit of CR2 should be made as one. When I am writing CR2 or equal to one, you are enabling the ADC one. So ADC should be enabled only after all these configurations are over. You need to keep in mind. Once ADC is on, the all these conversions are taken by the ADC peripheral. Then inside while one what should I do? I need to convert the ADC value. Then I need to check whether the value is above threshold. LED should be, should be switched on. So in the while one what should I do? First of all I need to start the ADC conversion. How will I do that? In CR2 there is a bit known as SW start. That bit should be made as 1. So the start of conversion bit in CR2 register should be made as 1. How will I do that? or equal to 0x 4000 that means you are starting the conversion that is bit number 30 bit number 30 of cr2 you are making it as 1 in order to start the adc conversion in the previous step you have only enabled the adc here you are actually starting the conversion then once the adc conversion is started before reading the data from data register you need to check or you need to wait until the conversion is over 
how will you check for the end of conversion end of conversion signal in the status register will be set that is the first bit of status register that is known as end of conversion flag bit of the status register you need to wait until eoc signal is set if eoc signal is zero you will be keep on executing the while one because this condition will be true you are extracting bit number one from sr register that is why you are writing sr and 2 that means eoc first bit will be extracted all the other bits will be masked so if that value is equal to zero this while loop will be keep on executing when eoc signal is set this condition will be false and control will come to the next statement so that when the eoc is set we can understand that conversion is over so the adc result can be read from data register to a variable known as result then what you will do if the result is greater than a particular threshold what i have decided in the program i need to turn on the led where is my led connected to pa5 so i need to make pa5 data as one or i need to write one to pa5 so how will i set a bit when i am writing one means you are setting a bit how will you set a bit you are having a register known as bit set reset register bit set reset register right so each gpio ports are having corresponding bit set reset register if you are writing one to the lower say 15 bits of bit set reset register you will be setting that corresponding bit if you are writing one to higher 16 bits the corresponding bit will be cleared so the high, lower 16 bits are used for setting th that uh, 15 bits in the uh, particular gpio higher 16 bit is used for clearing or resetting those 16 pins of gpio right so here when the value is greater than this threshold you need to set to the pa5 that means fifth bit of BSRR that is bit set reset register should be made as 1 that is fifth bit should be set similarly if this condition is false you need to make this bit as 1 in order to turn off the LED so if you are making the corresponding bit in the higher 16 bit as 1 that corresponding pin will be turned off if you are setting a bit in the lower 16 bit that led will be turned on so based on the led we need to switch on so pa5 means fifth bit if you are making it as one it will be on and if you are making this bit as one led will be off so this is how adc conversion program is working